Sell me your car today. This is Clay Edwards, and I want to buy your car, truck, or SUV today. Are you tired of dealing with all the marketplace maniacs and the Craigslist crazies? I hear nightmare stories every day about counterfeit checks for vehicles here in central Mississippi. Did you know if you get ripped off with a counterfeit check, your insurance company will not cover you? Let me make you a fair market value offer for your vehicle today. Contact me today at ClayBuysCars.com. That's ClayBuysCars.com. Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. It starts right now here on 103.9 FM WYAB. This is the Clay Edwards Show. I'm, of course, Clay Edwards, streaming worldwide at WYAB.com as well as the TuneIn app. If you guys want to text into the show today, the Guns and Gear text line is 769 769- 241 1944. 769 We've got a guest on the phone with us for the first hour, so the phone lines will not be open, but we'll open them up in the second hour. This morning, let's jump straight in. We have our guest, Jim Rathman. Jim is a private investigator doing some work for Joe Exotic, the Tiger King himself. Uh, trying to help him with a new trial, I believe. Jim, is that right? A new trial, or is it a, an appeal on this on his current conviction? It's correct. So we're trying to get right now. It's up for appeal. Okay. Uh, we're trying to get his whole entire conviction thrown out. And either give him a new trial or set him free. Gotcha. Uh, uh, real real quick, Jim. Uh, Jim's got some ties to the South here. He uh, uh, went to LSU. He's a national champion from the LSU 2003 football team. Do I have that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Go Tigers. That's cool, man. Before we jump in, you got any cool Nick Saban stories? I, I've listened to sports talk radio my whole life, and I never got to ask that question. So I got to ask. Um, you know, I don't. I, I can't really sit back here and go, wow, is there one particular story? Well, I will say the reason he's the GOAT, and he is the GOAT of college football, is his, his work ethic. You know, being 20 years old, 21 years old, you know, some guys even younger than that, being able to watch somebody at at their moment when they're just at their greatness. And with him, you know, during that season of our national championship, I mean, that guy would be up, gone on a plane, 6 o'clock in the morning, fly out, visit two recruits at school or at their home, and then be back in time for practice. Uh, never missed a beat. Um, I remember winning the national championship and on the bus ride back from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, uh, you know, he's already got an entire – booklet of what he needs to be working on uh, right when he gets back, what recruits need to be contacted, where he needs to go next. I mean, it's just it's just business 24-7. Um, but that's why he's the greatest of all time. I mean, he's just – the work ethic is just not comparable. Well, you know, and yep. as you get as you get later in life and become a you know full fledged adult business owner and whatnot yourself, you have that experience to look back on and say, you know, here's what it took for Nick to hit on all cylinders all the time. Am I doing that? And you, you've got you've got a you've got something to look at and say. Here's what here's what greatness looks like. Am I doing the little things every day? So that, that's pretty cool to have that experience to take with you through life. No, uh, absolutely. I look back on it. I cherish it. And uh, you know, say you played for Nick Saban. I mean, my gosh, the whole coaching staff is historic. If you think about it, we had Jimbo Fisher, Will Muschamp, Derek Dooley. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Kirby Smart came in. I mean, some of the biggest names in college football. That's right, man. I forgot about that, that that staff. I remember sitting here locally at a Buffalo Wild Wings watching y'all's national championship game with a bunch of LSU fans. I'm a I'm a little old Mississippi State fan. You know, we ain't never won nothing like that. But but I was living vicariously through them. So congratulations on that, man. That was that was a big deal. A uh, little Thank bit you. about yourself, real quick. Past the football stuff, we could talk about that all morning and never get to the point. Um, <laughs> you, you were also a Secret Service agent. You guarded uh, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and their families while they were vice pre- president and vice president. Correct. That's good stuff there. Correct. Man. So I, I got to do that for a few years. It was great. Um, you know, Secret Service, you get to protect number one and number two from all around the world. So whenever they come to the United States, they get Secret Service protection. So uh, between all the prime ministers and presidents of foreign countries, got to provide protection for them, too. It was a really cool experience. Gotcha. And so what you're doing now is a private investigator work. Is that is, is that the best way to explain it? Yeah, so I do investigative consulting. Um, you know, I'm not going to be the kind of person that's going to go and, you know, sit out in front of a house waiting to see if they violate their insurance uh, claims and things like that. That's definitely not what I do. I like to consult for families 
uh, or for Vic. So whether it's, you know, cold case homicides, uh, sometimes there's uh, cases where they're ruled suicide, where it may have been, you know, a foul play involved, or it could just be that it's a suicide. You just have to be able to explain it right to the families, uh, work for uh, missing persons, um, you know, wrongfully convicted. So I try to take more complex cases on and then see what we can do with them. And, you know, a lot of times with a new set of eyes, uh, you can really uncover a lot, which wasn't seen before. And so I really take pride in doing that. And right now I get to do that for Joe Exotic. So how did you end up on the Joe Exotic case? Because this is an interesting one. I think like most people, uh, COVID hit in March of 2020. Coincidentally, the Tiger King drops March of 2020 when everybody was stuck at home with nothing to do, and we all became a bit obsessed. I, I know I watched it two or three times just because I couldn't believe what I had just seen. And uh, here we are three years later. I said this on my Facebook last night. If you had told me in March of 2020, I wasn't doing radio or anything then yet. This all just kind of happened by accident. If you had told me, man, you're, in three years you're going to be on the radio interviewing a guy that's uh, doing an investigation for Tiger King here, I'd have told you, what are you smoking? But yet three years later, here we are. How did, how, right. did you, how did you get involved into this? <laughs> now, that's a great question. So much like everybody else, um, you know, I was stuck in quarantine with nothing to do. I was actually refusing to watch the show. Uh, but I ran out of stuff to watch. So I kind of was like, well, what's everybody talking about? Let's check it out. So I went and watched that train wreck known as Tiger King. Um, but episode three it had to do with Carol Baskin and her missing husband, Don Lewis. And so I decided at that point I was going to look and see what happened to Don Lewis. Uh, ended up covering some really good information. Um, and that eventually led to Investigation Discovery reaching out. Um, they had a television show. They had the funding. They didn't have the investigator. And so they brought me on for that project. And, you know, they just followed me around. And we continued to uncover new materials and put that out. Uh, on, so that show was called Investigation or Investigation Discovery. It was called Joe Exotic, Tiger's Lies and Cover-Up. And it came out in September of 2020. After that show... And it's available still uh, if people want to watch on Discovery Plus, correct? Yeah, there, there you can Discovery Plus, Hulu, YouTube, uh, you know, where basically there's a lot of streaming services. If you just put it into Google, like how to, how to watch Joe Exotic, Tiger's Lies and Cover-Up, literally 15 to 20 different platforms where you can get the show and watch it. Um, it, was, it was a great show. I mean, I enjoyed doing that. It's still one of the biggest shows Investigation Discovery's had. Um, but, you know, after we did that show, Joe had reached out to me uh, wanting me to figure out what happened with his case and where did it go wrong and basically to see if I can pick apart uh, what had went wrong in his trial. And so I did that. I started out with just the trial transcripts from trial transcripts, started obtaining documents, started combing through everything. And I'm going to tell you, it was eye-opening uh, as I went through this more and more because if I just went off of what I watched on television, I'd be like, the guy's guilty, put him in jail. But that's the difference between television and reality, you know, and how they can edit film and what they can do. And when you look at this case for what it truly is, there's a complete miscarriage of justice here. Uh, and even to my surprising, when I looked at this, uh, the amount of involvement that went into this to create this narrative, uh, it's its literally, it's shocking, but it's very much jail-worthy for a lot of people. Well, you know, you know uh, to, to your point about television being able to do that, uh, another, another Netflix show, Making a Murderer, would have you think that dude was innocent, and then they come back, uh, Candace Owens and the Daily Wire just did a whole other flip side of that and kind of showed everything. And I'm like, man, I feel like such an idiot for thinking that guy may have been set up. But that's just what how with proper editing and leaving certain aspects of stories out that you can you can carve a narrative and make people think what you want them to think. So, no, you're you're absolutely correct, and that's why it's really important to research it. I mean, you know, you have your trial transcripts. And, I mean, they can be very boring to read at times, but can really tell you a lot what evidence was submitted, what wasn't, um, but really figuring out what exactly are the facts of the case. And uh, a lot of times we like to just watch what's on television and just kind of accept that as this is what it is. That's why it's on television. But in reality, um, that's just what they wanted you to believe. And I'm not saying all television shows do that. Not all of them do, but they can kind of create the narrative of which way they want it to go based on how they edit it and what their storyline is. 
Right. Uh, so well, you really have to do your independent research to figure it out. March of 2020, people still trusted the media somewhat. <laughs> now, not so much. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> so, not now. So, all right, so you get involved in this thing. I tell you what, let's do this. We've been on for 10 minutes. Let's take a break real quick, come back. We'll keep this thing uh, on schedule, and we'll jump in where we left off. I've got – Look forward to it. I am on the phone with Jim Rathman. We're talking about the Tiger King, Joe Exotic, his appeal. We'll be right back. This is the Clay Edwards Show. All right, welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. Real quick, the segment's brought to you by Burgers, Blues, Barbecue. They got two great locations to serve you right here in Madison, in downtown Madison, and in downtown Brandon. But wait, there's more. There's a third location opening here in just a couple weeks. They're shooting for November 6th right there in the Dogwood Complex, right there in Flowood, so be looking out for that. That's right, another Burgers Blues barbecue location coming to Rankin County, November 6th. But hey, look, man, you know about the great restaurants, all the great burgers and everything else, but man, there's so much more to Burgers Blues and barbecue than just that. They have two food trucks available for all your special events. They also offer catering from five to 5000 for all of your holiday parties, office parties, weddings, events. They can handle it all at Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue. Uh, way more than just burgers. Get over there. Try it today. You will not be disappointed. Try one of their salads, one of their wraps. I could go on and on and on. Here in a little bit, I'll tell you what the Blue Plate special of the day is at the two local, currently open, Burgers, Blues, and Barbecue locations. But you can check them out online, burgersblues.com. All right. Let's get back to our guest this morning. We got Jim Rathman on the phone. Hey, Jim, you there? Yes, sir. All right, so let's jump straight back in, man. I guess what I what I want to know is, <clears throat> so you get you get involved in this thing, and I'm guessing at some point you get a hold of the court transcripts, as you because you had mentioned Perfect. earlier they can be boring to read, but there's a lot of information there. What did you see that jumped out at you? Where you're like, you know, hold on a minute, man. This this guy's innocent, or this guy's he's not guilty of what they're accusing him of anyway. Right. Well, really, uh, some of the things that first started popping out at me was was reading the questions and answers when people were testifying, specifically that of the investigating agent in this whole entire ordeal, Agent Bryant. Um, you know, for, for people that don't, and, and I'm going to try to explain this in a way for them to understand without going too far on a tangent, but when you watch the television show and you watch what was happening, you, you know, Joe was charged 19 counts, right? He had... Uh, he had killed five tigers, and that came about 17 charges, essentially between uh, Endangered Species Act and the Lacey Act violations. And then he had two murder for hire. The murder for hire uh, charges are the ones that got him all that time that he's doing currently in prison. And when you watch this, one of the primary things, and this stuck out to me, was that Joe allegedly sold a tiger cub to a, a guy by the name of Robert Engizer, um, and that money was used to give to Alan Glover, which Alan Glover used that money now to go do the murder for hire. So that's what was put the wheels in motion, right? That was a huge piece of evidence, according to the government, in order to get the charges brought up on Joe for the murder for hire because that showed his intent, okay? Right. but. As you're reading the questions and answers, and it's literally in the trial transcripts, it was, it, you know, the first thing that stuck out to me was that, well, wait a minute. This was done by the two biggest witnesses, Alan Glover, Jeff Lowe, said, this is the guy that did it. They circled it, photo lineup, Robert Engizer, this is the guy that Joe sold the cup to. This is where the cash went from Robert Engizer's hands to Je- to Jeff, or, sorry, to Joe Exotic's hands to now to Alan Glover, and Alan Glover left with three thousand dollars. If you remember the whole three thousand dollar talk, right? Yes, that's what the big piece was. And here it is. I'm reading the trial transcript, and guess what? Robert Eggeser wasn't even at the zoo. He was in another state getting a vehicle fixed that had broken down. And the FBI confirmed this information, and how they were able to confirm it is Robert Engizer, he had like a traveling circus. And so as you cross state lines, you have to have a log of paperwork, right? Because you're crossing state lines with animals. There's different rules and different regulations. So they went, and all they had to do was go through that book. And sure enough, they could see every place that he's at to confirm the receipts. So he wasn't even at the, 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 
the zoo at the time that it was alleged, which would have been November, late November of 2017. And so I read that, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So when did the government find out this information? Lo and behold, found out the U.S. attorney, the one that prosecuted Joe, she did a grand jury based on that factual information from Jeff Lowe and Alan Glover as being factual. Robert Engelser, that is the guy. That's what they used to get the indictment from the grand jury. But two weeks later, she now knows from the FBI that that information was completely and utterly false. She didn't go back and correct it. She didn't go strike the record. She didn't drop the charges. She pressed forward anyway, then convened a second grand jury, still never brought up anything on the murder for hire, and now went forward with the 19 charges that, I'm sorry, the 17 charges that Joe got on the, uh, you know, for all the animal-related charges. So once I saw that, I knew that was a massive, massive red flag. Um, Because if that was your big piece of evidence, and that is complete, proven to be completely false. And why are your main witnesses lying about that? How are they so inaccurate, right? And so it caused a lot of problems. And then from there, I mean, it just, you just started picking the entire case apart. Yeah, you know, just going back, kind of jogging my memory here, I still to this day, I do not understand how Jeff Lowe dodged going to prison on all this. I mean, he, if, again, I may be, my details may be a little sketchy, but it felt like he set this whole thing up to steal Joe's zoo. It, it, it just it never seemed real to me. And I, again, and didn't then didn't he come out? I, I, I remember watching the second Tiger King stuff. I have not watched your the series you were involved in yet, so maybe, maybe this got debunked or something. But didn't he come out and and sign an affidavit saying that he lied about Joe's involvement in all this? He did. So to explain that for your audience. Uh, Joe has an attorney by the name of John Phillips. And I know if you go ahead and you do some searching online, there's some trolls out there that have been trolling John Phillips for many, many months. Um, but I will sit here and say that, you know, obviously I know John Phillips. Uh, I consider him a friend. Um, he did an exceptional job of getting Jeff Lowe, Lauren Lowe, Alan Glover, James Garrettson, and other players involved in this to come in and give full depositions. I'm not talking just like a conversation. They gave full affidavit depositions to all the criminal activity that they were involved in and the amount of lies that they put together in order to put Joe behind bars. They not only did they give those affidavits that are also on video, they went ahead and handed over hard drives, cell phones, audio recordings, uh, you name it, that proved without a shadow of a doubt that Joe never committed these crimes, that this was completely staged and rehearsed and orchestrated in order to get a conviction on Joe. And they provided all that information to John Phillips. All that information was put into this appeal. We just need someone from the higher courts to actually look at this for what it is and make a ruling. And hopefully they'll make a ruling that is in Joe's favor because he's completely set up. And here it is. He's spending his time behind bars right now. Crimes he didn't commit. And he's and, he, well, he's battling cancer too, isn't he? He is. You know, he's battling cancer. He's he's uh you know in remission right now. And you know, I I'll tell you this, just from what I know, what's been what's been told to me is that some of them at M Health Department needs to go into that prison where Joe's at currently because there's reported nothing but mold, black mold, I mean you name it, the conditions for people that are sick. And recovering, I mean, their immune system's already weak as it is from the chemotherapy and the cancer, and now you're talking about putting them around mold and everything else. Anyone in the, in the health department is listening to that, please go to that prison and inspect. Yeah, you know, it, I can get on a whole tangent about that. Our Mississippi prisons are, are, are death traps as well. I mean, we, we send people to these places for, air quotes here, rehabilitation, and they're lucky if they make it out alive. Right. You know, either from the gang violence or from the the unacceptable conditions. It, it, it's mind boggling to me that we're allowed to do that to our own citizens in the country, but that's another battle for another day. Right. Um, so Joe got 21, well, originally what, 22 years and a, then a judge so graciously trimmed a year off. So he got, <laughs> he got 21 years in prison. You know, yeah. the crazy thing, he was allegedly, if I remember correctly, going to be pardoned by Trump, but didn't Mark Meadows throw a curveball there and kind of say, well, that's not something we need to be a part of. 
Yeah, well, there's a, there's a few things that went into the whole entire pardon. There was an opportunity for Joe to be pardoned. I wish it would have happened. But unfortunately, there were a few things. Yes, it was reported that Mark Meadows kind of threw a curveball in the middle of that. But at the same time, they created a complete circus around this pardon. I mean, you had helicopters flying in the air. You had wrapped planes, buses, you name it. It, it it wasn't taken seriously, and that was really. that was all done by just like a fan, right? Do I, do I remember that right? Just a big Joe supporter that we were sitting out in front of the it, prison it was, with a limo and all this other crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was done by his legal team at that particular time and their investigator. And you know, I, I can kind of understand creating some sort of hype, but at the same time. There, there's a fine line, and when you're trying to get a presidential administration to pay attention to what you do and what's going on, they want to know the facts. They don't want to know a circus. They don't want to know all this crazy kookiness, because then it just looks like this was it, it wasn't taken serious by anyone. Well, then it makes it you know, harder and for kind of discredit it. You come across like a very serious guy. I, mean, I looked at your website and just just talking to you and stuff. I mean, obviously, you don't play a lot of games. Um. So for a guy like you to get involved in this, I feel like Lynn's credibility, uh, remove all the circus sideshow stuff from this whole thing. When 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 a guy like you gets involved, I, I have to look at it and say, okay, he sees something here. And when the, when they do all this circus sideshow stuff, trying to bring attention to it, I get it. I, I was a nightclub owner for 15 years. I'm all about the sideshow. And you know, I understand uh, the P.T. Barnum side of all of it. I get it. But to your point, when you're trying to get a presidential administration, even one like the Trump that you know could be a bit of a sideshow itself, to look at it, and given the time it was happening to leading up to an, a, a reelection, it was a or a campaign, whatever you want to call it, it, it was it was bad business for him. I think it hurt him. It, it, it definitely hurt him. I mean, it's been it's been said at this point that that hurt him, and you know, it just went too far. It was too much. I think if they played it cool. Um, I think they had a much better chance of doing it. And unfortunately, Joe, at that particular time, he wasn't able to have a say-so. He was in solitary confinement. So um, he wasn't able. He didn't even know that all that had happened until he came out of his 30 days or it was that they put him in the hole uh, and before he realized, wait a minute, I would have never have allowed this stuff to happen. And, and Joe was pissed, and rightfully so. I mean, that was his chance, right? So... Uh, you know, going forward, there there won't be any of that. Um, you know, this is a serious business and a very serious matter, and we can't we can't make this into a spectacle. It needs to be facts need to drive the train here, Let's and on. that's the goal is to lay out the facts. All right, well, hold that thought for a second. I want to hear what the what your next plan is, and kind of put a button on this conversation as soon as we come back from the break. Here, this is the Clay Edwards Show. We got Jim Rathman on the phone here discussing. The Tiger King, Joe Exotic, what's next? Will Joe get out of prison? We sure hope so. We'll be right back on The Clay Edwards Show. Welcome back in to The Clay Edwards Show here on 103.9 FM WYAB. Before we get back to our guests real quick, this segment is going to be brought to you by Watkins Construction and Roofing, your hometown roof repair specialist right here in central Mississippi. Hey, look, I could tell you all about it, but how about we read one of their over 938 five-star reviews right there from Google. This is from three days ago. May W says, Watkins Construction Roofing did a... I don't know if I did fast, didn't zoom through it so fast, I could read it. Did a fantastic job fixing our roof. From the estimate to project completion, the whole team exceeded our expectations. And should we ever have a roof issue again... We will definitely be calling Watkins Construction and Roofing. Guys, check them out. They'll come out. They'll do a complimentary roof repair. Oh, not roof repair. I'm sorry. A complimentary roof inspection on your home or business today. That's Watkins Construction and Roofing. WatkinsConstructionInc.com. And look, the overwhelming majority of these five-star reviews all talk about how much they stay in communication with you throughout the whole process. And I'm going to tell you, in a day and age where people don't like to do anything but text, somebody who will pick up the phone and call you and stay on on top of it with you is a very valuable asset. So get in touch with Watkins Construction Roofing today for all your roof repair and replacement needs. All right, let's get back to our guest here. We've got Jim Rathman on the line. Hey, Jim, thanks for staying on hold there. 
Absolutely, my pleasure. Um, I I guess let's jump to to the now. As you've gone through this, I mean, how does how is it looking for an appeal for Joe? Are we going to get a? Is he going to get his day in court? What, what what's next? Well, that's certainly what we hope for. You know, there was a motion for a new trial filed back in April of twenty two. So over a year ago, year and a half ago, we're still waiting on the courts to respond to that. Um, but John Phillips uh, put together an entire motion for a new trial. With that, uh, he put all the evidence that has been collected since the television show. Uh, so you're talking about evidence that was withheld from the defense team, right, that was known as exculpatory evidence, which could have helped Joe in his defense. Um, but unfortunately, as, as you read through this new document and what's been submitted to the court, it shows a long history of foul play, especially on the government side. Uh, you have witnesses cooperating with the agents, with the prosecutor's office. They're withholding uh, certain recordings, uh, text messages, various things that would not show their case going the direction that they wanted to go to. So therefore, it was eliminated or not given to the defense. Um, examples such as cell phone, uh, one of the cell phones that was turned over to John Phillips, right, when the government went through it and extrapolated the text messages between Agent Bryant and, um, you know, Jeff Lowe or things like that, it would show that there was only one message, right? But that same phone done by the attorney's office, John Phillips, it was actually 101 text messages. So that means they took 100 of those messages and just didn't give any of that to the defense because it didn't go with their narrative. Um, Audio recordings. Um, There's things where, you know, Lauren Lowe even talks about how Agent Bryant broke into Joe's private residence and took evidence from Joe's residence that still is not completely known to what exactly was taken. Um, You know, that's what's alleged. And I will say that that's what's in these affidavits. That's what's put into this information. There is an awful lot of cooperation going on and communication between agents, prosecutors, and whatnot. There's so much of it. But why wasn't this given to the defense? Why wasn't the exculpatory evidence given so Joe can have a proper defense? Um, and again, this just goes to show there Joe was worth more in jail than he was out. And there was a there was a big need to put him in that prison, uh, and they were hell bent on doing it at that point. I mean, the amount of misconduct done in this case is overwhelming. I mean, absolutely overwhelming. Who who stands to benefit the most from Joe staying in jail at this point? I mean, I, I hate to I hate to run it back to to the first show here, but it, I mean, who's driving this train? Is it the government not wanting to admit they screwed this up? Is it? Carol Baskin's team trying to keep him in there? Is it uh, some of the, the, the PETA type people who would, uh, which I guess would still fall under the Carol Baskin side of things that are just so disgusted by the, uh, the, the, the deaths of the Tigers? I mean, who, who's really pulling the strings to keep him from getting a retrial, a new trial? Well, this whole entire plot was really created by Jeff Lowe. Um, he's the one who really created this whole entire thing. And James Garrettson, you know, James Garrettson wanted to, 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 to be able to do the the cup petting aspect of things. And even though he, I believe from his previous criminal charges, he wasn't going to be allowed to, but apparently, uh, you know, what he was doing, um, you know, Jeff Lowe has the zoo. Um, I don't want to sit here and say Carol Baskin has something to do with making sure Joe stays behind jail, but obviously him being behind bars helps her in what she was doing and what, and all her beliefs and the things that she wants to do with her, uh, you know, career, so to speak with, with all the animals. So uh, I think it's orchestrated by many people. I think the government got involved in this case. I think what they were presented wasn't ex- completely the facts, but once they went a little too far, um, they had to go forward with it. I mean, the way that they set this up, they orchestrated it, they purposefully suppressed evidence. Uh, there was one guy named Jeff Johnson who was supposed to testify in this case, has information that would completely blow the cover off of uh, the case Agent Brian put together and others, and they purposefully made sure that Jeff Johnson was not allowed to testify. They completely suppressed it um, and, you know, claiming that he had made threats to injure or kill somebody that would have been considered a government witness. Um, and so they took that to an extreme to ensure that he was never able to testify when, in fact, those weren't even the things that were even said. 
um, but they wanted to make sure he wasn't there, and, and he wasn't. Uh, there's literally, the, it, this is mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you could tell it's been eating at you. I mean, when somebody can speak this freely uh, off the top of their head about this many details, you've clearly done your homework on this thing. That, that, that's why it made me look at this with a fresh set of eyes and say, man, I, which I, I'll be honest, I thought the whole thing, even if you took it at face value, what we saw in season one and with the whole thing, I still said that, that Jeff Lowe and the other guy that allegedly got the $3,000 were so incompetent, nobody was getting killed anyway. I mean, just right. just strictly, just at that, they, they was it, Jeff wanted the zoo, the other guy wanted three grand, Carol wasn't getting killed. Right. I mean, just it, at minimum, th- this isn't worth 20-something years in prison. Well, no, and, and, and you know, when you, when you talk about the murder for hire, there's some very specific things that the audience needs to understand when it comes to a murder for hire plot. You have to show the intent. That's the key word in this is you have to show the intent. And what that means is, is like, so in this particular case, James Garrison brought the undercover FBI agent to the zoo, okay, Re- 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 this, refre- but- refresh our memory on James. Is that is that the fat boy that was on the jet ski? Yeah, he's the one with the jet ski. The pawn shop or whatever? He's, yeah, he's okay. the one that was working as the government informant the, the okay. entire time. He kept bringing this, or bringing up to Joe. Joe kept denying the meetings, like, I, I'm, I'm good, about bringing this, his guy, right, his contact, which is the undercover FBI agent for this murder for hire. So he shows up at the zoo with this undercover agent. And, 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 and this is what people need to understand, right? There were 47 minutes that it was a recorded audio conversation. This is what came up in the trial. 47 minutes. In that, James Garrison is leading the FBI agent and basically saying to Joe, hey, Joe, this is my guy, you know, the guy that can, you know, that, that could take care of that thing you want done in Florida, right? And Joe's like, oh, okay, yeah, so what is something like that going to cost? Me? Like, well, it's going to cost 10 grand. Five grand up front, give him the other half after the job's done. Okay. Well, I don't know how I'm going to get money for that. Maybe I'll sell some Tiger Cubs, right? Then the guy said, well, why don't you go ahead and get, go to Walmart, get two burner phones. Give me one of the burner phones. That way nobody knows to communicate. And when we're done, we'll smash the phones and get rid of them. Joe's like, why don't you go buy your own phone? The guy's like, why don't you give me a pistol? I'll, you know, give me the pistol and I'll go ahead and do it with that pistol. I was like, what, am I supposed to give you a pistol from uh, registered to me in Oklahoma and give it to you to go do this crime? Like, are you stupid? Right? So, again, he refused to do it. Everything that was suggested as a next step that would show the intent was never taken. When that meeting was over with, right, keep in mind, James brought this FBI agent there. Joe didn't ask for this guy to come there. So that's problem number one. When that conversation ended, that 47 minutes was over with, Joe never called James Gerritsen again. He never called the undercover FBI agent. He never sold any Tiger Cubs. He never went and got a cell phone. He never went and got a pistol. All those next steps that were that was to happen to show intent never took place. Yeah, you know, this reminds me free speech. This reminds me of uh, a couple months ago when the trial of the guys, the alleged militia guys who were going to kidnap uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmer. It, the whole thing was set up by the FBI, and, and a jury threw it out because they clearly saw that this was the FBI leading these guys down this road to something right. that was never going to happen. This puts off big vibes similar to that Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you're right. You know, and in this, you know, that's free speech. I mean, Joe can say whatever the heck he wants in front of anybody. If you don't put any intent to it, the crime didn't happen. And, you know, here it is. He, he didn't take any of those next steps. And that's why when James Garrett, I'm sorry, when, when Jeff Lowe and Alan Glover pointed out Robert Enyser as the person that bought a tiger cub, that's where that significance comes in. Because if the $3,000 given is what Joe gave to Alan to go commit this crime, right? And so they're trying to show that that was his level of intent. It didn't go to the FBI agent, but it went to Alan Glover. Therefore, it would show the intent. But it never happened. It never happened. So the three thousand dollars that was given to Alan Glover was to get rid of him from the zoo because there was a, there was a problem between him 
and and Joe and Alan actually need to go back to South Carolina to take care of something regarding Social Security. That's right. Joe That's Joe is giving him the three thousand dollars to go away. Think exactly. it had think absolutely it, nothing best, to do. Best way to make somebody go away is loan them money. Yeah. Here's three thousand. Hopefully I'm getting off cheap. Get out of here, be gone. Yep. It had nothing to do with the murder for hire plot. And so that's what the government was using to get the indictment on murder for hire. Like, oh, you sold this tiger cub. I got two witnesses that identified this guy. They used that as a grand jury to indict Joe on two murder for char- murder for hire charges, only to find out shortly thereafter that that was completely and utterly false. And you would think as a – and now is a current sitting federal judge, by the way – would know that, uh-oh, I should probably correct this, but didn't. Chose to just press on anyway. So the key piece of information you have is now completely utterly bogus, but you're pressing on anyway? I mean, some red flags there. So, so, so what do we do moving forward? How do, we, how do we get this thing to the next step? So what we're trying to do at this point is, is, is create the awareness, get this information out there, Hope that the federal judges, the Court of Appeals, will literally look at this for face value and go through all of this evidence that was put together specifically for them to see that Joe was wrongfully convicted. His conviction needs to be tossed and either give him a new trial or set him free because this is completely and utterly bogus. And a man is sitting behind bars. His life, like this, isn't this isn't entertainment anymore. This isn't about television anymore. This is a man's life that is sitting behind bars right now. And you've got all these people that conspired against him, literally conspired, are walking free and creating more and more problems. When they've come forward to the attorney, they've given sworn affidavits and they provided the evidence. No one forced them onto a plane. No one forced them to go to John Phillips' office. None of that. They did that on their own free will and provided all this information, the same evidence that was given to the government, and yet, wow, there's all this discovery of new information that was never given to the defense team. And it should have. They had access to it. Yep. These are the things we need the Court of Appeals to be able to see. They need to make their ruling, and hopefully the ruling will be in Joe's favor to let him out of those prison doors. Enough is enough. This has been going on since 2019. We're about to enter 2024. Five years of this man's life has been completely taken away for something he did not commit. He doesn't get those five years back, but at least they can make the wrong here and make it right. Absolutely. Jim Rathman, thank you for your time this morning, brother. How can people follow you, keep up with this, any of that? No, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I am on Instagram at the real Jim Rathman. You can follow me on Twitter. Real Jim Rathman. Uh, I have my website, uh, jimrathmanthecompany.com. Um, I try to update information as much as possible. Uh, I'll be going on a lot of a lot of news stations. Uh, there's a lot that's going to be happening over the next few weeks, talking about this and bringing this to light. Uh, and I greatly appreciate you for having me on your show. And it's been it's been a good time. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Stay in touch. Let me know if we can do anything to help out. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. You as well. Thank you. All right, let's uh, come back real quick from the other side of this break, land the plane for the hour, and then we'll get into all the local news and whatnot here on the Clay Edwards Show. We've got a whole another hour to go this morning. Thank you, Jim Rathman and the Tiger King folks for helping make that happen, or the Joe Exotic folks, should I say. Edwards Show, guys, we've got about a minute here before the top of the hour break, so we'll save any news for that. Man, that Joe Exotic stuff is really unique. Because I think the guy, I think he got duped into that. I mean, let's just be honest. He's probably ain't the smartest guy in the world. At least that's how he comes across in the TV show. But I like the guy. I think he's an interesting character. I would. I think five years, even if he's guilty of everything they said, I think he's been in jail for five years. I think enough. Let let the guy out. We don't need to be housing this guy and paying for all of his medical stuff for the next twenty years. It, and it's a death sentence for somebody with cancer. Really unique too, if you think about it. For a small port. In, for a small a small moment in time, he was the most famous person in the world, and he didn't get to enjoy none of that. I think that's punishment enough, considering everything else. All right, this is the Clay Edwards Show. When we come back, I got a bunch of Jackson news for y'all. We'll be right back.
I hope you enjoyed this clip of today's Clay Edwards show. You can tune in live every Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. on 103.9 FM, WYAB in Central Mississippi. You can stream it worldwide and live at WYAB.com, the TuneIn app, or Alexa. Just search WYAB. And, of course, you're listening now on a podcast, so you can just hit subscribe where you're at. We update daily right here on the Clay Edwards Show, and check out all things Clay Edwards at clayedwardsshow.com for shirts and more. Peace.